Thanks for a wonderful Sunday, uh, this good time together, and uh, just ask that you bless it uh, to each and every one of us. Lord, the message that's done this morning, take it to the heart that needs it the most. And uh, we sure miss the kids. Can't wait till they come back. I ask all this in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, I'm just going to say hi to everybody listening, and I think we have a song. Mm -hmm. Ready? Ready? We're ready. We're gonna try a song. Now, you kids, you gotta sing along too. Okay, so here we go. All right, hey kids, I know this is one of your favorite songs because you ask for it to sing it. So here we go. I said B I B L E. Now you know you have to stand up. We can't walk around the chairs because you're not here, but you can stand up and walk around your house and remember to stop on the B I B L E. And we're going to sing this three times. The first time when we get to Bible, say, Bible, with a whisper verse. And then on the second time, we'll just say, Bible. And then on the third time, make sure you shout it out with your loudest inside voice that your parents will be okay with. All right. Are you ready? All right, stand up and let's march. The B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God. The B-I-B-L-E Bible. Ready? The B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God. The B-I-B-L-E Bible. Now this time. The B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I, whoops, I forgot to stand. Let's stand. We're going to do this again. I, B-I-B-L-E, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E, Bible! Right, good job, you guys. That was good. I can't wait till we see you again. We can walk around the, um, march around the chairs and everybody can stop. All right, you guys, let's go right to the memory scripture verse. Today, it is from the New Testament in the book of Ephesians, in chapter 2, in verse 8. So you know the drill, right? If you want to find it in the Bible, the verse in the Bible, you can't find it, you don't have anyone to help you, you can go straight to the table of contents and look under the New Testament. Ephesians is in the New Testament. Okay? Alright, and go to chapter 2 and verse 8. And it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Mm -hmm. Noah, I wonder if you guys know this. Here's a little, um, just a little fact that's in Pretty important. If you see these quotes around scripture, or when you see the quotes around scripture, that means that it comes exact from the Bible. The reason that is important, because we don't want to change any words from the Bible. We want to make sure that we quote exactly what the Bible says. Alright, let's read this again. <clears throat> Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. All right, Brother Jim, he's going to tell you more about what grace is. Grace is actually God not giving us what we deserve. All right, and this part, and that not of yourselves. We can't save ourselves. We have to rely on Jesus 
to give us, to save us. He is our Lord and our Savior. And by grace, that is the gift of God to us. All right? All right, now let's see if we can start erasing this. We're going to start kind of at the first. Normally we erase the scripture verse last. Today we're going to erase it first. All right. So where is this found in God's Word? That's right, it's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. All right, let's see. We're going to erase the very, very important words. They're all important, right? Because they all come directly from the Bible. Well, let's erase grace. For by grace are you saved through faith. And, well, saved is pretty important too. We're going to have to erase the whole thing if we erase all the important words, right? We're going to, we'll stop right there right now. All right, you ready? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. All right. Let's go ahead and erase that not of yourselves. Okay, here we go. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It it is the gift of God. Good job. All right, now let's go ahead and do the gift of God. All right, Ephesians. Let me turn to my Bible again. Yes. All right, let's see Ephesians. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. You guys got it down. All right. <laughs> Let's erase the whole thing. All right, Dominic, Joey, or Joseph. And Gabriel, are you ready? All right, everybody at one time. You ready? Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Good job, you guys. You are so good and so smart. And Brother Jim will come up and have the message right now. Alrighty, well, here we are. Everybody should have their Bibles. And I always tell my Sunday school kid, when people go to work, if you're a plumber, you bring your pipe wrench. If you're a carpenter, you bring your saw. And uh, if you love Jesus and you're in our Sunday school class, you always got to bring your Bible. And that is so, so important. Right now, this is very easy. It's the first chapter of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1. And that's easy because that's at the front of the Bible. So you can find that. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Let's read this real quick. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I don't care what scientists tell you. I don't care what archaeologists tell you. Or if the earth is 75 million years old and all that other stuff you hear. Uh, I go by what the Bible says. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That settles it. Okay? And uh, we're going to talk about a very interesting message. First of all, let me say this. Have you ever wondered why there's mean people in the world? 
Have you ever wondered why there's hospitals and people die and people get hurt and there's anger? Have you ever wondered why just within the past few months we've had um, the coronavirus, we've had murder hornets, we've had unrest in the cities all across our nation. Have you ever wondered why those things happen? I always thought people were good. I guess they're not, okay? But if you ever wonder why, this, there's very simple, because sin came into this world. Now, let me say this. God always makes things perfect. And so, I'm going to show you some very interesting people that God made a long, long time ago. And to understand this, why sin came about, we need to go way, way back to the beginning, way back when God first created the earth, and He put two people there. And how many of you know their name? Let you think about that for a minute there. Okay, well, Adam and Eve, make sure that's right, right there, those were God's first two people. He made Adam, and then he made Eve, and let me say this, and this is a whole other message, he didn't make Adam and Adam, and he didn't make Eve and Eve. God's smart. He made Adam and Eve, so we have a man, we have a woman, and then he put them in a very perfect environment. The world's perfect. It's called the Garden of Eden, and he made it just for them to live in. And they didn't get sick. They didn't have headaches. They didn't uh, have to worry about a whole lot. And it was a perfect environment. It wasn't too hot. It didn't get cold. It was perfect. And what a wonderful uh, thing that is. And so, uh, so he put them in this perfect place, and they were very, very happy. And we all like being happy. That's a good feeling. Well, they were happy all the time. And God brings um, Adam, all the animals of the world, or at the time that he created them and everything. And you know, it's funny because Adam, he got to name all of those animals. He got the name. Some of you might have maybe gone to a zoo at one point in your life and you might recognize we've got elephants and there's a rhinoceros and um, uh, you got the tigers and lions and bears oh my and all that but he, he got and he got to name them all and these animals were nice okay he could walk up to the lions and tigers and say here this kitty 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 and they didn't tear them to pieces that's a good thing. Hey, man, it was a whole different world. Everything was perfect. So you're saying, well, Brother Jim, if everything's so perfect, what happened? What went wrong? Well, let me tell you something. Sometimes, let's see, we got number two and number three here. You see, the devil does not like God. I won't go into all the details, but he wanted to kind of be like God, and that's not going to work. So he was cast out, and in the form of a serpent, which is another word for snake, okay? So he's a snake, and even that S name has, Satan has that S hiss to it. But anyway, he began to talk to Eve. And he didn't have to scare her or do anything like that. He just wanted to put a little, kind of, kind of question God a little bit. And uh, in this perfect world, God said, you know what? You can't get me a gift or buy me a car. God can snap up a battleship if he wants to. So how can I get these two perfect people in this beautiful garden to show they love me? So he said this, you can eat of all the trees that are around, but that one tree right over there, and if you're from the south, it's over yonder. But anyway, he said, that tree over there, I want you to stay away from it. A very simple thing. We'll show God we love him. We'll just obey him and stay away from that tree. Well, that's when the devil, in the form of a serpent or a snake, came in, and he began to talk 
to Eve. And you say, Brother Jim, snakes don't talk. Okay, here in Genesis, the snake talked. I'm not going to explain that. I just believe what the Bible says. The snake talked. And he convinced Eve that she doesn't have to listen to God. Just like some bad friends might tell you, you don't have to listen to mom and dad. And maybe you don't have to listen to the teacher. Some of us older adults, you don't have to listen to the preacher. But God has put people in charge in all areas of our life and we need to listen to certain ones. And so, but she began to listen to the serpent. And she took a bite of that fruit. Now some people say Eve bit the apple. I don't know if it was an apple. It could have been a banana or a kumquat. We don't know. But it was some kind of a fruit. She was not to touch it. She wasn't even supposed to look at it. She takes a bite out of it. Oh boy. Now we're in trouble. She disobeyed God. Just like a lot of people disobey God. They won't go to church. They won't read their Bibles. They just disobey God. They just the way people are. They very sinful like that. And so not only did that happen, and that was a bad thing, she went and took the fruit to Adam. Okay, now here's the problem. If Adam would have been the man that he should have been, he could have beat the tar out of that snake and we'd all be living in paradise tonight. I would have liked that very much. I hurt my knee at work. I'm kind of limping around in pain. If I was up in heaven, I'd be doing fine. But Adam gave in. And let me say this. Sometimes we say, well, you know, uh, I'm the man of the house and my wife doesn't tell me what to do. Liar. We do everything they tell us to do. He knew it was wrong, but he did it anyway. He listened to his wife. And he took the fruit too. Well, now we are in big trouble. Because when man fell, he disobeyed God, he fell. And you know what the sad thing is? And this is really sad. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God, that relationship between them and God went broke. And that relationship... You know when you do something bad, you kind of don't want to get around mom and dad. You kind of stay over here a little bit or over there. And that's how they were. They couldn't really get around God. And so they went and uh, tried to hide themselves. And um, it was a very sad thing. Um, so Adam was tricked by Eve, just like Eve was tricked by the serpent. And they started doing the blame game, and God came along and said, Adam, uh, where are you? Now, here's the thing. God's God. He knows everything. So he knows where Adam is. He wanted to see if Adam knew where Adam was, because something changed with Adam. And it's an interesting thing. They tried to sow fig leaves to cover themselves up because they realized they were naked. And the thing about a fig leaf, it doesn't cover a whole lot. Just like man tries to come up with religion and church, it's, it doesn't work all the way. God said you have to have a coat, and God made the coat. He had to sacrifice an animal. Blood was spilled, and sin will always hurt someone, always hurt. And he made coats, and a coat is from the chin down, okay? That's the full coverage that God has, not the little things that we come up with. And so uh, it was a very sad thing. And God had no choice but to kick them out of the Garden of Eden. That was a very sad, very sad day. And you know something? It's, it's sad because they could no longer be close to God. There was a separation. And... They had to go on their own. They could no longer stay in the Garden of Eden. A perfect, beautiful environment. We disobey God and lose it all. That's sad. That's so sad. But here, not only is this a sad story, but here's the good thing. God made a way to get us back. Claudio, Miss, Sister Claudia was talking about grace. Grace 
is God giving me something I don't deserve. But he gives it to us anyway. And it's by faith I believe what the Bible says. I, I believe God. And you know, it's interesting because he sent his son Jesus many years later to die on a cross so we can go to heaven. And when you get saved and ask Jesus to come into your heart, that fellowship is restored again. Of course, we're not perfect. Sometimes we do something we shouldn't do and we break that fellowship again. Well, what you do in a case like that, you just have to go and tell God you're sorry. Uh, I've done that. Uh, I've done that a lot. And sometimes you just have to say, Lord, I, we're not as close as we used to be. Check my heart. Uh, am I reading my Bible like I ought to? Uh, was I um, uh, maybe cross with somebody? Did I do something wrong? And you need to get that thing right. And when you do, guess what? Ah, you get that pat on the back. The fellowship is restored. And we just keep on going. Uh, that's how sin came into the world. And it's going to be here until Jesus takes us out. And when the time comes, he's going to... And I don't want to get too far into that. But uh, he's going to create a whole new earth. And... Uh, it's going to be a wonderful thing. We've got some good days to look forward to. I know we're all scared. And we're frustrated. And some of us are angry. We've got the coronavirus. The murder hornets. Uh, there's so much violence in our world. But listen to me. He's coming back. He's going to fix it. What we need to do is make sure he's in our heart. Make sure we asked him to come in. We're saved on our way to heaven and he's going to come back and take care of us sin entered the world but God's going to fix it he sent his son to die on the cross and by the way that's the only cure for sin it's not church it's not religion it's Jesus and before I end the message I just want to do this um, we here at Faith Baptist Church we always pass out these little gospel tracts now on the back of the track are some steps. You can read them and follow them, and they show you how to ask Jesus into your heart. I encourage you to do that. And I believe we have some questions concerning this message. Okay, kids, let's see how you listened up to Brother Jim as he gave the lesson. Are you ready for your questions? All right, number one, why are there bad things in the world? A, because of politics, B, because of sin, or C, because of money. That's right, you guys got that right off. Good for you for listening up. It is B, the correct answer, because of sin. All right, number two, <clears throat> what job did God give Adam? A. Polishing shoes. B. Building houses. Or C. Naming the animals. That's right, they didn't even have shoes back in those days, right? The answer is C. Naming the animals. Alright, number three. What did Satan convince Eve to do? A. Did he convince her to love God? B. Trust God? Or C. Disobey God? Yes, Eve disobeyed God. Satan convinced her to disobey God because, by eating the fruit. All right, let's see number four. Sin separates us from God. Is this A, true, or B, false? Yes, that is A. Sin certainly does separate us from God. And the last question, you guys are 404 again. Every week you get every one of these right. So, five. What word describes how God got us back through Jesus? A. Works. 
B, grace, or C, law. You got that one too, it's grace. Thank you, you did so well. Thank you, and Brother Jim, do you want to come up and um, pray? <clears throat> yeah, I'll get there in a minute, hang <laughs> on. <laughs> oh my goodness, All right. okay. Oh my gosh. Interesting message, well I hope, I hope that message helps. You know how sin got into the world, we know the one that can take care of it too. Uh, Anyway, let's go ahead and dismiss. Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you thanks for a wonderful time together for this Sunday School lesson. Lord, once again, I'm asking, please take it to the heart that needs it the most. Lord, if there's anyone that's not saved, I ask that they, they get that taken care of. Um, please bring us back next time safe and sound. We give you thanks for everything that we have. Thank you for loving us when we are so unlovable sometimes. Lord, I ask this in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.